Welcome back. Israel surprised international observers this week by announcing that it will engage with the International Court of Justice to defend against accusations of genocide made by South Africa. Israel has typically refused to appear before the ICJ, but has denounced the accusations by South Africa as a blood libel. Hamas killed more than 1,200 Israelis in their attack in October last year, whilst the ongoing Israeli operation against them in Gaza has claimed the lives of 22,000 people, according to the Hamas-controlled Ministry of Health. To help to explain the legal nuances involved in this dispute, I'm joined by Barrister and Chair of Lawyers for Israel, Natasha Hausdorff. Uh, Happy New Year and welcome back to uh, GB News. Happy New Year. I imagine some of this must depend on a definition of genocide. One must exist, I assume. Uh, indeed, and we find that in Article 2 of the Convention uh, for the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Um, and that is, uh, in particular, the reason the existence of this treaty uh, dating from 1948, which Israel is a party to, uh, that has underpinned Israel's involvement in this case. Um, it may therefore not be surprising to many lawyers that have Israel uh, is engaging in the hearings that will uh, be taking place in The Hague this week on Thursday and Friday, uh, because unlike any previous case that has been brought, uh, for example, applications for advisory opinions, which are not legally binding uh, and in which uh, Israel has uh, declined to participate, this is a contentious case which has been brought by South Africa based upon that treaty, and that's the basis upon which Israel has said uh, we will be engaging and we will be uh, calling out this baseless accusation. The definition of genocide has to do with the elimination of a people, that you're, you're making efforts to ensure that they don't exist. Is that right? Is that what the definition is about? That's absolutely right. And it's at its heart, Michael, is the intention to destroy a group as such, uh, an ethnic, religious or racial group. Um, the phrase, of course, was famously uh, coined by Raphael Lemkin in the aftermath of the Second World War, and it was developed to be able to describe that intention to destroy a group. In that case, of course, it was the Jewish people that were targeted by the Nazis uh, throughout the Holocaust. Uh, so the fact that this term developed in order to describe that appalling crime of genocide perpetrated against the Jewish people, the fact that the uh, tables have been turned to such an extent and the victims, essentially, of uh, a genocide that was perpetrated again against Jews on the 7th of October by Hamas and other Palestinian terrorist organisations, the fact that this term coined by Lemkin after the Holocaust, uh, again on display on the 7th of October, would now be being used against the victims in this case, is pretty extraordinary. What, what will the defence be? Some people will say, well, look, 22,000 people, possibly, allegedly, have been killed in Gaza. This sounds like a very large number of casualties. What is the Israeli defence that that doesn't constitute genocide? Well. What you haven't been able to say is how many out of those 22,000 were in fact Hamas and other Palestinian terrorists. According to Israel... Let's say it's half. Well... How, how, would, how would the defence continue beyond that point? Well, that's a very important factor, one that we're not clear on as yet, but the current estimates of the civilian to combatant casualty ratio in the Gaza war um, are two to one. Now, compared to a global average of uh, casualties in urban warfare uh, contexts, and these are statistics put out by the United Nations, globally, we're looking at a nine to one civilian to combatant casualty ratio. So the two to one ratio that is currently estimated on the basis of very limited information, we have to caveat, um, is unparalleled in the history of urban warfare. That puts the lie to any suggestion uh, that international law is being violated in terms of the broader international humanitarian law. But the crime of genocide is well over and above that. And we're dealing, as I indicated, specifically with the intention to eradicate a group. Um, it's difficult to express how uh, bogus uh, and divorced from reality that suggestion is in this context. I mean, I assume the Israelis will actually go further even than you've just said, if I may say so, in that they will argue, first of all, that they have tried to conduct precision strikes, but also that aid has been moving into Gaza. I mean, the people of Gaza have gone through a terrible, terrible time, but they have not starved en masse because aid has got through. 
And that is principally because, amongst other things, Israel's opened the Kerem Shalom crossing, which is the main crossing point from Israel into Gaza. Of course, uh, aid getting in through Egypt uh, has been subject to stricter controls. And COGAT, which is the organization in the Israeli army responsible for humanitarian provisions, has also been clear that their um, rate of inspecting aid surpasses at the moment uh, the rate at which humanitarian organizations are able to get aid into Gaza. So Israel has been, again, going over and above certainly requirements of international law, but also uh, what it can possibly do to contribute to the provision of aid for the civilians in Gaza. And that's in parallel with, as you say, the precision strikes coupled with warnings, coupled with more measures than any other army has taken in the history of warfare to prevent civilian, civilian casualties in Gaza. And even the United States has recognized that the IDF has gone further than the US Army might very well in those circumstances. The, the United States has been entirely contemptuous of this South African bid to call this genocide. Why is it South Africa? that has brought this case? Well, unfortunately, South Africa has a long history uh, of uh, promoting libels against the Jewish state. Uh, you'll be aware, of course, of, of the conferences in Durban, the Zionism is racism resolutions, a shameful part of the history of the United Nations. We've also seen a, a continuous support from South Africa for uh, the Hamas leadership, uh, telephone calls that took place even after the 7th of October massacre. Uh, and it seems not one word of condemnation from the South African government of that until this brief in which there has been um, a, a nod to that. Um, we've also seen South Africa's support for other uh, terrorists uh, in the past, um, Muammar Gaddafi, amongst others, and, of course, now it's deepening relationship with the Iranian regime. So support for terrorism is nothing new. The reason that the United States' condemnation of this is so critical is because what South Africa is applying for is essentially a provisional measure that the court order Israel to stop its defence, its uh, actions, military campaign against some 40,000 Hamas terrorists. Uh, and that has implications for all law-abiding states, the US, the UK included. And we should be hearing more uh, from those law-abiding countries against this initiative. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Natasha Hausdorff.